Hi, welcome. The topic of this video is something that affects almost half of all women in menopause and perimenopause and causes a great deal of discomfort and even distress, so much so that I feel it deserves to be the sole topic of an entire video. Now I'm giving you all a TMI warning right now. This video covers low estrogen's effects on the lady bits. If this type of information makes you uncomfortable, then this is probably not the video for you. If, however, you would like information and a discussion on vaginal atrophy, then you are in the right place. So stick around. I am going to discuss the causes, symptoms, and medical and natural treatments. Let's get started. Vaginal atrophy causes thinning, drying, inflammation, and loss of flexibility of the vaginal walls. It occurs due to loss of estrogen, most often after menopause, but it can occur during perimenopause or for other reasons, such as surgical removal of the ovaries, medications that affect hormones, chemotherapy, or hormone treatment for breast cancer. It seems to be more prevalent among women who've not given birth vaginally or who smoke. Of course, that's not a hard and fast rule. What's most important is that it affects half of all women when hormones shift. Half? That is a lot of women left to endure this torture. So I'm honestly quite surprised that this topic is not discussed a lot more than it is. I realize the definition of vaginal atrophy doesn't sound all that serious. Thinning and drying of the vaginal wall is a big deal, right? But I can tell you, those women that suffer from this know firsthand that it is extremely serious. Symptoms can vary from mildly annoying all the way to extremely painful and distressing. It can cause itching, burning, soreness, and pain in the area and is often mistaken for a UTI because it can also cause burning with urination. I'm sure many of you ladies know the torturous pain of a UTI and frequent visits to the doctor to constantly be told there is no infection can be absolutely devastating because honestly, at least an infection can be treated. Who wants to live with these symptoms forever with absolutely no treatment options? Many women have just resorted to buying urinalysis strips for home use so they can just start testing themselves rather than constantly wasting time with useless doctor's visits. I have some on hand all the time. They're really not that expensive and they test for other very useful things as well, such as ketones, protein, and glucose. If you are one of those ladies who constantly has sensations of a UTI, it's worth considering for your own peace of mind. On the flip side, vaginal atrophy can cause legitimate infections, both urinary and vaginal. UTIs, bacterial vaginosis, and yeast can become real issues and greatly impact quality of living for many, many women. Along with atrophy, the pH of the vagina also changes, leaving women at a much higher risk for infections that can become frequent or even chronic. If you are visiting the doctor frequently with constant suspicious symptoms such as strange discharge, odor, pain, itching, and irritation, I do know that you can buy bacterial vaginosis test kits, although I don't know much about them personally or how accurate they are and they are more expensive than urinalysis dipsticks. I wish I could tell you that was it for the symptoms, but unfortunately, I have a couple more. Sorry, ladies. Atrophy can cause pain and discomfort during intercourse, and for many women, bleeding and UTIs following intercourse are also an unfortunate reality. If all of those weren't enough, incontinence and pain and irritation from any and all clothing are also on the list. That is a whole lot of potential misery to be suffered by a very large population of middle-aged women. So how can you tame the torture if you are one of those unlucky women suffering from vaginal atrophy? Estrogen is the most popular solution. Vaginal estrogen, rings, and pills are the most popular options to address vaginal atrophy specifically and tend to come with less risks than oral hormone replacements. There are two options for vaginal creams. One contains conjugated estrogens from pregnant mare urine, the other estradiol synthesized from a plant chemical extracted from yams and soy. 
They are typically used daily for a week or two and then a couple of times a week thereafter. Vaginal rings sit in the upper part of the vagina and release a consistent dose of estrogen over the long term. They are replaced every few months. Tablets work in a similar fashion to the vaginal creams, inserted daily for a couple of weeks and then a couple of times a week thereafter. Please keep in mind that even though vaginal therapies are localized and do not come with the same risks as oral hormone replacements, they still do come with a small risk of blood clotting, endometrial and breast cancer, and stroke. So, if you have any sort of medical history, please be sure to speak with your doctor to make sure that the benefits of these treatments outweigh the small risks. If estrogen therapy is not an option for you, or you simply want a more natural approach, the following solutions may be helpful to you. Water-based lubricants are a good choice for short-term relief throughout the day and can help alleviate pain and discomfort during intercourse. Try to avoid products containing glycerin, petroleum, fragrances, and parabens. Glycerin can increase your risk for yeast infection, Petroleum can change the pH in the vagina, increasing your risk for bacterial vaginosis, fragrances cause irritation, and parabens are hormone disruptors. There are several very good products out there that are free of all of those unwanted ingredients. For a longer lasting solution, moisturizers are a very good option. They provide moisture to the vaginal tissue and are generally used every few days for long lasting relief of dryness. You should also avoid unnecessary ingredients for the very same reasons I just described for lubricants. Also, keep in mind, the vaginal walls will absorb the moisture they need and the remainder of the product will be shed. So, it can be pretty messy. Natural lubricants like coconut oil and vitamin E suppositories are another option. But coconut oil does break down latex, so please keep that in mind if you are using it during intercourse where condoms are involved. Accidents can still happen, ladies, believe it or not. Do not discount lifestyle changes as beneficial to atrophy either. A diet containing phytoestrogens, flax seeds, and plenty of water to hydrate the body, as well as exercise to promote healthy blood flow and hormone balance can greatly help in minimizing symptoms. So can avoiding highly fragranced hygiene products and soaps, that can be incredibly drying and irritating. Of the over 100 symptoms that can possibly plague us during perimenopause and menopause, vaginal atrophy is most definitely one of the worst. It can be absolutely torturous and greatly affect quality of living. With so many women plagued with this, I am incredibly shocked and saddened that it is not more widely talked about and mainstream like puberty. Menopause is puberty on steroids in reverse after all, isn't it ladies? I really hope this video was helpful. If you're interested in more content for middle-aged women that informs, entertains, and helps you live your best midlife, consider subscribing. I make videos on all things midlife. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.